Hello and welcome back to this fifth tutorial on PyViz and Python. In the last video, we created a graph that looked like this. It was a graph that was a little bit more legible because we were able to discern between two different pieces of data, the manuscripts, which were our pink nodes, and our letters uh, from Alcuin, which were our blue nodes. And we did that by passing in the arguments for uh, each node, specifically the argument of color. In this video, we're going to be working with not color anymore, but node shapes. And what this is going to do is it's going to provide another element in our map that allows us to distinguish between two different types of data. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're going to make our manuscripts not only different in color, but different in shape. And the same thing goes for our letters. That way, when we look at our dynamic network graph, we can actually discern uh, differences between data much more easily, much more efficiently. And by also including shapes in your graph, you can differentiate between uh, types of data. So if I were to be working with these letters, some of these are genuinely alkaline letters, some of them are not, I can change uh, the shape of the blue nodes to allow the uh, user to very easily identify the difference between a real Alquinian letter and a fake one, should I wish to do that. So that's why you should consider shapes. In PyViz, uh, there are really two different kinds of shapes. There are shapes that have the label inside of the shape, and then there are shapes that have the label outside of it. So let's pull this graph down one more time. The default shape in PyViz is going to be the dot. And as you can tell, the label, let's look at this right here, letter 36, is located underneath the dot. This is an example of a shape that has the label outside of it. But what happens if we start looking at data that has the labels inside of it? Well, what's going to happen is PyViz is going to have to squeeze the text of that label into the node. So this means that it's going to affect the node size. The longer that text is, the larger that node will become. And we're going to see that in this video. So when we start working with the node size function in a couple of videos, take, uh, keep that in mind, that the only thing that the size actually affects in uh, PyViz is going to be uh, the nodes that have shapes that have the labels outside of it. So the type of things that you can actually make in PyViz with labels inside of it are an ellipse, a circle, a database, a box, and just text. We're going to see all five of these today. Uh, the other uh, example that we have is labels that are outside of it. We've already seen the dot, <clears throat> and we're only going to see a couple of these in this video. I'm going to save images for a later one, but we're going to look at the dot, uh, or the diamond, the star, and the triangle. Just to give you a sense, you can pass in all of these arguments the exact same way just by changing up uh, the actual string that you're passing to that argument. That's going to make more sense when we get to it in just a second. So without further ado, let's go ahead and just jump right in. So what we're going to do is we're going to work with this existing function that we have, and we're not going to do a lot to it in this video. We are simply going to pass in or create a couple more arguments for our function. The first thing that I want to do is I want to create an argument for an ep shape. And again, you can name this whatever that you want. And our ep shape, if you remember uh, from above, is going to default at dot. But I want to make that ep shape an ellipse. And we're going to see what that looks like in just a second. The other thing I want to pass in is the ms shape. And we're going to make that by default in our function. We're going to make that a box. So what we're going to have is, if we go back up here to our list, we're going to have two pieces or two shapes that have the text within them. That means that later on when we start working with the sizes, we're not going to be able to adjust the node size uh, because these have labels within them. And the label is going to dictate the size of the node. So let's go ahead and go back down here. So we've got our ep shape as ellipse and our uh, ms shape as box. So now all I have to do is I have to just pass in that data to our add node function. So I'm going to say shape is equal to ep shape because this is our ep node. We can see that right there. And we're going to do the same thing to our ms node. We're going to say shape is equal to ms shape. And what that does, the shape function, or the shape argument in the add node function, allows for you to very easily change the name or change the shape based on the string that you pass to it. And it's important that your string matches these precisely. If it doesn't, it won't work. 
So let's go ahead and map this just to show you what this is going to look like. So it's loading right now, as you can see. And you should see an immediate difference in this graph and immediately be able to discern information more easily. So now we're going to scroll in. And now we see that our manuscripts look very, very different from our, um, from our letters. While the manuscript is rendered with this box, uh, the letters have this uh, circle with the text inside of it. From a distance, it doesn't look that different. Uh, but when we zoom in, we can actually discern changes more easily. One of the things that's happening right now is we're using, I forget the algorithm that's default here, but when we start exploring algorithms in the next video, we can make this map a lot more legible. We can start adjusting the spacing between all of these nodes and make it where we can kind of discern things more easily from this distance. For right now though, we haven't added those parameters. We'll do that in a later video. But right now you can see the effect that the shape argument has on our graph. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and experiment with a couple of these other ones. Let's see what a database looks like. So all I'm going to do here, and I can change this now down here. I can say, ep, let's make it ep, uh, ms shape. It's going to be equal to database. And just for fun, let's go ahead and see what the star looks like. If we do that for ep shape. So I'm going to say star. So what's happening right now is I am simply calling in our map data function. And instead of letting our map data functions defaults play out, I'm actually altering them here. So now when we run this, it'll take just a second. There we go. Bringing down the new graph. Now when we run this, we should see a very different shape than we did before. And now you can see uh, that we've got all of our letters rendered as stars. Uh, I've never actually used the star myself in any of my graphs. It does look quite pretty, though. Uh, but then we can see that what we have here is a database icon. And that's what's happening with the manuscript nodes. Play around with these options, though. Let's go ahead and just show you what text looks like. And I'll do uh, text, and I'll do, I'll do text for the ep letter. Oop, helps if I do it correctly. There we go. And we're going to do triangle now for our data, or for our MS shape. We'll run this graph one more time. All right, taking just a second. And here we are. Now you can really see a difference because the text is has no uh, shape with it at all, but your manuscripts do, which means that if you want to look at the node, uh, you know very clearly in this graph which ones are the manuscripts. I've never worked with this myself. I like for my text to be either inside or next to a shape so I can actually discern what's happening. But the nice thing about Pavis is if you don't have that same opinion that I do, you have this option. So that's all for this video. Uh, play around with these shapes. Uh, find ones that work in your graph. And they do the exact same things. They're still dynamic. You can still drag them around just like you could before. It's a little harder to grab the text now, though. <laughs> I can't seem to grab it right now. There we go. You have to be a little bit more precise and actually touch the actual text. But play around with the different shapes and see which ones work well for your graph. In the next video, we're going to start working with algorithms and actually start playing around with the different Barnes-Hutt algorithm, the forced algorithms that uh, PyViz has in its library to actually start making this graph look a lot better. That's all for this video, though. Thank you for listening, and please subscribe down below.